here also you can have singular multiple stages. The other option which is which is non-positive displacement are fans, they are generally used where high flow volume capacities are needed but at low pressure. So in such cases fans are used and they can be centrifugal or they can be axial. Uh, I am sorry, let me see what is here. Oops. Yeah. So, obviously compressors apart from that mechanism requires other accessories like for example, lubrication. Lubrication is very important in, uh, in pneumatic systems, uh, firstly because they are not self lubricating just like hydraulics. So, you have to have special lubrication uh, mechanisms here. And second also because th there is the, the tendency of air to leak is actually much more than the tendency of oil because of because air has very low viscosity and oil has high viscosity. So, oil does not uh, tend to uh, leak out as easily as air does. So, <coughs> so, therefore, all seals everything are much tighter to prevent air from leaking and, th and that creates a lot of friction. So, lubrication is more necessary. Similarly, cooling because the, the compressor is actually doing a lot of work, so a lot of heat is produced which needs to be cooled and you need unloading systems, you know compressors are uh, energy guzzlers. So, whenever you do not need, uh, when you have adequate created an adequate compressed air supply then there has to be, there has to be mechanisms by which these compressors are actually unloaded. <coughs> and finally, there has to be control mechanisms for uh, shutdown as well as for duty cycle control. Duty cycle control means that uh, especially stroke length control and uh, ha, ha, for, for, for how much time you are going to that is how quickly you are going to operate the piston. So, all these control devices are uh, will create will, will actually operate the compressor at uh, in, in such a manner that the current requirement of compressed air will be met at the, I mean with the best possible energy efficiency. So, so the compressor is not run, generally not run when uh, the compressed air supply is not so much required. So, compressors, so for example, this is a, this is a typical compressor where, uh, you know, this is, we can, we can see from the picture that this is a, this is a uh, IC engine driven uh, compressor and this is the compressed air supply. So, that so that is the accumulator and it looks like it is portable, it is just a picture which is you know downloaded from the net. <coughs> so, compressors are available at various you know sizes or, 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 or capacities and so, so 150 psi up to 150 psi would be low pressure, low pressure. 150 to 1000 is medium and greater than 1000 psi will be high pressure. The capacity of the compressor, so, so there is a pressure rating which is decided and then, so compressed air is actually supplied at that rating and then the capacity of the compressor is basically decided by the volume of uh, air that it can deliver in minutes at that pressure. So, it is uh, often, often in engineering it is often uh, describe in terms of CFM, it is called CFM cubic feet uh, per minute. So, uh, how, how many cubic feet per minute of uh, air the compressor can supply. So, that generally indicates its capacity. Now, we have pneumatic reservoirs as we said this is a this is a typical picture, it is just a container with one inlet and one outlet and uh, holds holds air under pressure and the capacity of the basically that is the you know pneumatic energy. So, the, so the, so the pressurized air is the pneumatic energy which is used to do work and the and the amount of energy that can be stored is basically decided by the by, by two quantities that is at what pressure uh, how much how much air is uh, stored and what is the pressure. So, they are generally a multiplicative relation because uh, I mean volume and pressure are both if you have high volume and high pressure then you are going to have high energy. So, as I said that is stores pressurized air for fast delivery of air volume and uh, 
it's like a capacitor somewhat if you if you if you if you appreciate an electric analogy then just like for supplying suddenly supplying large currents uh, without causing the voltage to drop we all we always connect a big capacitor across a, across a power supply because the capacitor can supply a lot of uh, current instantly uh, and, and therefore I mean as long as it has the charge to supply the current. So therefore uh, capacitor is generally kept charged at the circuit output so that current demands large transient current demands can be met without causing the terminal voltage to drop. So in that sense the, the, the accumulator is, is acts like a capacitor. Now the pressure in the accumulator I say as uh, the pressure in the accumulator has to be controlled because uh, we so as if, if air is really drawn from the accumulator at any time then the pressure in the accumulator will fall and then we you know uh, we need to uh, make that make up for that loss of pressure and make the pressure again back to the standard one uh, and that is typically uh, controlled using a relay with hysteresis. And then used with pressure regulator to actually deliver to valve and cylinder at six at around you know 60 psig is a is a very typical figure. So the control is somewhat like this. It's it's just like you know it's just like level control, very simple, very simple. That uh, suppose the regulator is actually designed to work at 120 psi, then uh, there is there is a hysteresis in the sense that. So you see what we are trying to do is that if you have if you have a if you have had a pressure setting suppose a, if you have had a pressure setting the of let us say 120 psi now as you are drawing load so this this pressure will start falling and then at 115 psi you again turn on the compressor such that the pressure keeps rising and becomes so that the pressure will uh, so you you actually make the uh, you touch your turn on the compressor at this point of time and then the pressure builds now as the pressure builds so you are moving along this line the compressor is now on and then you actually although you want to keep it at 120 p the 120 psi is the nominal voltage where you want to keep it but you actually let it build up to a certain point let's say up to 125 psi and then again then at when it reaches 125 psi you actually stop it so you come here right and then again as the loads will draw the air so the pressure will fall so you actually move around through this what is called hysteresis rectangle right so now uh, okay but there are so this is one uh, this is the way of you know controlling the reservoir or the accumulator. But there are many other some other uh, pieces of equipment needed like for example you need uh, pressure regulators. Now why you need pressure regulator is actually very simple <coughs> that is see uh, generally in pneumatics you have one pressure source right. So suppose that this is this is this is the compressed air source compressed air source. So as we have just now seen that firstly and, and from there generally typically a, an, a kind of duct or bus runs which provide air supply to a number of equipment right. And firstly all these equipment may not be operating at the same uh, at the same pressure. So, some of them may be working at let us say 50 psi, psi, some of some may be working at 120 psi, whatever. So, uh, but, but the fact is that remember that we, we said that why, why, why a pneumatic system is cheap? It is cheap because you are going to use one compressor. So, the compressor cost is going to divide is going to get divided. So, just because these require are going to require uh, these are going to require different 
pressure. So we are not going to connect three different compressors which will individually supply this equipment. So therefore, we need a device here. We need a device here which will take in this maybe this is some you know 300 psi. So which will take in this 300 psi pressure and will convert it to 50 or 120. So we are going to put actually we are going to put different pressure regulators for all these equipment and have a single compressor. So firstly that is going to be cheaper. Second thing is that as we have seen just now when we saw the uh, hysteresis controls of that uh, of the reservoir that the this pressure source is going to fluctuate. But that but for our operation precise precision operation it is not good that the pressure supply of this equipment fluctuate. So therefore, if we put a if we put a pressure regulator here, then the pressure regulator is firstly going to convert a high pressure level to a low pressure level, and secondly, it's going to so even if the pressure here, so suppose this is a 300 psi bus, so even if the pressure here varies 300 psi plus minus, let's say plus minus even 50 psi, but but the pressure here is, is even if it goes up and down the pressure here is going to be regulated by the pressure regulator to exactly very close to 60 psi. So, so the pressure regulator actually does these two jobs it first converts pressure levels and secondly it holds the pressure steady. Secondly as I said that we need lubrication so lubrication is needed as I said that firstly it is not self lubricating secondly because of tightness of seals uh, you, you tend to increase friction so therefore lubrication explicit lubrication is necessary and we also need air lot of air filtering because we are sucking in air from the atmosphere which contains many 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 particulate matters and which are going to get clogged inside the equipment and then cause further problems of maintenance in terms of you know sealing misses in terms of increased friction etc so we need equipment to uh, take care of these so, a regulator is used to drop pressure at to a level which is appropriate for a machine and it prevent pre pressure fluctuations on the air distribution duct to reach the machine and <coughs> settings generally re for regulator settings can be adjusted and it is self relieving in the sense that if the uh, pressure I mean there is there is too much inlet pressure then it is it generally relieves that pressure. So, this is just a typical picture of a pressure regulator and so you have this high pressure inlet, you have the low pressure or the controlled pressure outlet. So, this is going to the system or the equipment where the pressure is needed. This is coming typically coming from the reservoir. So, now, the pressure setting can be adjusted by this pressure adjusting knob and often there is a pressure gauge so that you one can see that the uh, inlet pressure variation. So, then the filter, filter can be connected at is generally connected at compressor intake and various types are possible, paper element type is a popular one and sometimes you put additional filtering you need just before the equipment to you know ensure further that these are uh, that the, that your components are protected and uh, so it it removes the large particles and it also removes moisture because especially particulate matter and and moisture you know creates a very sticky mix which uh, leads to all kinds of problems like you know increased friction sticking so the so the term stiction actually comes from that so the uh, static friction may, in, may increase substantially unless moisture and this particular matter is not removed. So, we have explicit lubricators because air has little lubrication and low viscosity and sp so the lubrication is generally achieved by spraying fine oil mist to air flow. So, you it is very difficult to you know in a distributed system to, to lubricate the system. So, just like in hydraulics the oil itself is the lubricator. So, as it travels throughout the system it actually lubricates the whole of the system. In this case air is not itself the lubricant. 
so, but it is nevertheless traveling throughout the system. So, it will so it is simple. Uh, so, the delivery of the lubricant can be easily done using the air itself. So, therefore, oil lubricating oil is actually in an in a in a kind of atomized form, it is uh, spread to the airflow and then the airflow takes it to various points and where it provides a lubricating function. So, if you have smaller droplets, you have longer lubrication and sometimes you can have uh, automi atomization. But this oils, remember that the moment you are going to put this oil uh, mist, uh, you cannot directly uh, release it, you can release it, you, 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 you need not return the air, that is fine. But at the same time, you cannot release the air just like that into the atmosphere because of the oil mist, because it is going to be health hazard. So, sometimes, so you actually before uh, before releasing into the atmosphere, it, it must be this oil must be filtered. Since this filtering regulation and, and lubrication are very, very common uh, requirements. So, we have you know like we have like combo units where this uh, filter regulator lubricator are designed together. So, filter plus regulator plus lubricator unit typically this is a symbol. So, so you have regulators, lubricators and actually filters. So, so typically some, some, some typical pictures of these, uh, these equipment. <coughs> then we come to direction control valves, right. These are very similar to the direction control valves that we have studied in hydraulics. And it, so it controls and changes direction of airflow from time to time. There are various functional types as we know there it can be two way, it can be three way, it can be four way, even, even it can be five way, it, there, there are various positions. So, it can be a two position or it can be a three position valve. So, it, it, what I mean is that based on their functionality and based on, based on their construction, there are various categories of uh, these direction control valves. For example, at, this is a typical three way valve which is manually operated using this knob and it has three operational modes. So, uh, namely off, vent and on. So, it can be made off in which case air will not flow. If it is on, then, then the air will move from inlet to the outlet. And if it is in vent mode, then the uh, inlet and outlet will be uh, connected to the atmosphere. Looking at some very typical valve case studies, so uh, very standard, this is a this is a double acting cylinder. And so, double acting means we need to move it this way as well as this way. So, here we have connected, uh, this is a two port valve, this is a, uh, this is a three port valve, this is a three way valve, two position. So, <coughs> it can connect. either this to this or it can connect in this position it will connect this to this and this side will be connect can be again connected either so, so they are actually independent. So, depending on the positions of these valves if they are in the position shown then this side is also pressurized and this side is also pressurized. So, the valve is locked right. On the other hand, on the other hand if you connect this end to this position and this end if you connect to this position then what happens is that then the, then, then the piston will start moving right because this chamber will be connected here, but this chamber will be connected to high pressure. So, the piston will start moving right and then there is vice versa. If you connect it the other way, this in this position and this in this position will start moving the other way. 
if you keep both of them so there are four 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 combinations and if you keep both of them in this position in this position then actually the cylinder is floated so it can move it, it is free to move because both ends are connected to vent so yeah so a to a b to p locks the piston and a b to e locks e means exhaust uh, the the piston is floated similarly this is a case where uh, where this is a two position five ported four way valve so five ports because uh, 1 2 3 4 5 5 ported and two position because this is this is one position and this is the other position okay so what happens is that sometimes you know these pistons when they are moving the load they will require high pressure operation because a lot of force is to be created and when they are returning then it's a low pressure operation so uh, so what happens is that see that the low pressure source is actually connected to this point this is this is sealed so this this motion is going to actually occur and this is connected to exhaust so this is the return position on the other hand when it's going moving this way so the this is this is the rod so the load is going to be connected to the rod load so when it is pushing the load at that time it this this is the high pressure position hp forward position so in that case you can actually drive it using your high pressure source right and <clears throat> so that will possibly save some energy similarly this is another application where uh, for example see this is a three way valve application where if you connect it to this position then the valve is valve will move this way these are springs so valve is spring loaded and so therefore for the for the for the return you don't need any pressure and you just shift the valve so this will get connected to this port which is exhaust and uh, then by spring action since 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 this side when it connects to exhaust this side pressure is low so so by spring action uh, the valve can return so you need only apply pneumatic pressure for moving the valve to the right from movement to the left is actually achieved by the spring similarly if you connect it to this position then what happens is that the pressure gets connected here and then when this valve is in this position you see so this is sealed while the high pressure will go and the low pressure will return so the cylinder will move this way if you now shift this valve then what is happen what is going to happen is that the high pressure will go this way so high pressure will go this way so it will be applied here it will be applied here and the this this other side will be applied uh, will be applied here so it will be so it will be exhaust this is also exhaust this this are vents you know this is vent and this is vent so then it will move this way right on the other hand if this valve is shifted to this position then what happens is that both sides of the cylinder for example <coughs> then this side of the cylinder is free for example in if the valve is in the position shown then this is sealed right 
So, therefore, uh, therefore, this chamber is sealed, while this chamber is open. So, what happens is that now if you want to push the cylinder, then the air will get compressed and some force will be created. So, it cannot be freely moved, you know. <clears throat> so, it, 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 it gets kind of soft locked that way. So, you can have various sorts of uh, such circuits and we will see some of them later in our next lecture. These directional valves sometimes they have to be they have to be moved you know we were talking about moving the directional valve from this position to that position. So, how do we move that? So, there as just like in hydraulics there are various uh, ways. So, you can have manual where you can have a push button, you can have a hand lever, you can have a foot pedal whatever you have or sometimes for very large valves we can for example, this is a you, you can have a pilot valve. So, you know this is a large valve. So, to be able to shift that position you see you see pneumatic pilots are used. So, this is a this is a pneumatic pilot which is used to shift this main valve right. This may be a this may be a big hydraulic valve also and this hollow triangle indicates pneumatics. So, so, you can have hydraulic pilots, you can have air pilots. So, even a large pneumatic valve can be driven by a small air pilot and they, they or otherwise they may be solenoids and sometimes as we have seen that they may have uh, they may be spring loaded such that the uh, especially the return stroke the, as such does not require an actuation force. So, these are the various ways of uh, actuating a <coughs> directional valve oh sorry so this brings us to the end of the lesson uh, so what we have seen is that uh, we have seen the pneumatic system principles and benefits in particular uh, we have seen that we are going to in pneumatic systems we, we are going to use uh, compressed uh, air and not only that we are going to use compressed air we are uh, mm, so compressed air you know has some benefits that we you I mean, know air is free and uh, it does not require a return line etc. But on the other hand the because of the compressibility of air the system response tends to be slower uh, and the there is another big benefit uh, compared to hydraulics is that the, the fire safety is much more uh, intrinsic and so there are so basically it means that there are certain very definite classes of applications. We have also seen that in, in certain cases where you need a lot of you know low power applications spread over a large area pneumatic systems come very much cheaper because it is uh, you can use one compressor and then you can use an air duct system to actually you know reach the pneumatic power to a uh, large number of places without requiring too much uh, ducting costs. So, so there are certain kinds of applications where pneumatic systems are quite well suited compared to hydraulic systems. So, it is it, it's just a question of uh, so it is just a question of the particular kind of application where these systems become more beneficial. We have also seen the main system components in the sense that we have seen talked about compressors, talked about uh, accumulators, uh, regulators and some kinds of direction control valves as well as the cylinder. Now, there are many various other kinds of elements which we will talk about in the, uh, in the next lesson. So, we have seen the major kinds of system components, compressors we have seen mainly the compressors are which are used are reciprocating uh, or uh, reciprocating compressors. <coughs> we have seen how they work and uh, we have looked at some pneumatic control valves uh, various kinds and we have also talked about accessories such as uh, lubricators and filters. So, coming to the end before the end let us look at some some easy 
relatively simple questions what are the main advantages of pneumatics over electric systems and so what are the main advantages of pneumatics over hydraulic systems and can you so for example one one thing could be can you name some applications where uh, a hydraulic system is preferred can you name some application where a, where a, where a pneumatic system is preferred and identify the major components of a pneumatic system so major components we have discussed this name two major types of compressors so two major types of compressors could be you know reciprocating could be rotary vane type could be fan type non 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 positive displacement also then three different types of directional valves so we have seen these uh, and draw their symbols so this is of course very similar to hydraulics so that's all for today thank you very much